Hey, what's up everybody? It is Tuesday, June 9th. Summertime is here. Let me tell you, summertime is a beautiful day here in New York City. Wow, I love summertime. I love it. All right, let's talk about the market. We had a little bit of a pullback today. As you know, I've been telling you that although the fundamentals are bullish right now, you know, we have record-breaking fiscal support in the economy. Things are starting to open back up. Uh, the market's getting a little bit ahead of itself, I think. You got the put call ratio. Actually, the put call ratio yesterday hit 0 0.60. I mean, that was the lowest since December 2016. And it is very rare to see the put call ratio get down to like 0 0.6 or 0 0.59. I mean, you only see that every few years every four or five years. That is an extreme level and it represents or it reflects a high degree of optimism. Lots and lots of call buying, people jumping in right now. So I think we're going to get a pullback and then it probably will provide a buying opportunity. But let me just mention, there are things coming up next month in July that we have to be aware of, potentially could disrupt any rally or maybe prolong any correction. Uh, remember, I always say you got to look ahead, right? When the market bottomed in late March, April, and I was buying down there and I was telling my subscribers to buy, that's because the market crash, which was an extreme crash, it, it, uh, by many measures, it was worse than the 1929-1933 crash in, in its um, magnitude, in its ferocity, in, in its viciousness. Uh, and that discounted the economic contraction, but we knew that there was going to be a major fiscal response. And we saw those fiscal packages being released. I mean, big, bigger, biggest. They, they kept coming out with uh, new uh, fiscal bills. And so the market responded. The market saw that eventually we would be peaking out in virus cases and things would start opening back up again. That's reflected in the big bounce of 40% plus increased NASDAQ going to a new all-time all record high. But now you gotta look ahead. Like, see, people are coming in now and they're saying, oh yeah, now I could get in because things are good. Now, that's not how it works. You gotta look ahead and certain things in July potentially shaping up to be a deal killer. But we'll know when we know. The beauty is we're going to know when that happens. Um, but so I'm a little bit cautious up here and uh, looking for a pullback. One of the things I wanted to talk about, which I find very fascinating, and at the same time, it's kind of funny and it's also really lucrative, is the fact that there are a lot of people out there, and I would call them, you know, smart people on Wall Street who really have no clue what's going on and they continue to see everything through the prism of their beliefs. They don't even try to uh, understand or, or uh, get a level, a level of knowledge about what is going on. They have a belief system and they want to see what's going on. They want to view what's going on through that prism of beliefs. Now let me give you a specific example. There's a guy, a pretty famous analyst, um, I won't mention the name, but he uh, was saying, and, and it's funny how they say this, because you could, you could really sense the frustration. He's like, oh man, you know, you know, now what's the point? We don't have to think about the fundamentals anymore. We don't have to think about corporate profits anymore. We don't have to think about market sentiment anymore. We don't even have to think about market valuation anymore because the Fed is just going to buy everything up and push it up. Look what the Fed did in the last few months. It juiced up M2 and the market went straight up. So he's like crying like, you know, what are we, what, you know, the game is over. Like, you know, no matter what we do, the Fed is just going to push everything up. So my question is, if you know that as a fact, and by the way, it doesn't work that way. And I'll tell, I'll explain why in a minute. 
But you would think if you know that as a fact that the Fed is constantly going to, then what are you crying about? You have the most precious inside information that anyone could possibly have. Just buy. But they don't. They're like, we want to invest on the real fundamentals. Like, if the Fed is making the game so easy for you, and again, it's not, which I'm going to explain, but in their minds, if the Fed is making the game so easy for you, buddy, then go with it. What are you beating yourself up for? Oh, and he added something in there, I forget. And as an MMT person, I kind of love when they do this. It's hilarious. They said, so at the end of his thing, saying, well, we don't need fundamentals anymore or corporate profits or, um, you know, valuation or market sentiment because uh, now we're work. The Fed is just going to juice everything up and we have full blown MMT. He says, we have full blown MMT. So right away, this guy has no clue whatsoever about MMT. He thinks MMT is monetary policy, which it is not. MMT is simply uh, uh, the description of how uh, an economy works with a sovereign currency issuing nation where that country can spend in its own currency. It is not constrained or limited in any fashion. And it always has the ability to satisfy obligations denominated in its own currency. In other words, it can never involuntarily become insolvent. MMT is not monetary policy, so but these guys don't care, okay? They don't even make an attempt to try to understand what MMT is. They'll just use it to rationalize their frustration. Oh, we, we, you know, we might as well forget about everything. We got MMT now. Now, if he said MMT because we've had a massive fiscal response and the market's going up, but again, if you know that, like I know that, my subscribers know that, you have a massive fiscal response, it's going to lift the economy up, you buy the market in that case, but still, they want to be victims. They want to see everything through that prism of false understanding that they have in their heads. It's really an incredible thing to behold. And by the way, as an investor, it is so easy to take money from these people. I mean, it's like they're giving it away. But you see this kind of mentality at the highest levels of the financial industry. They're literally crying now because the Fed is juicing everything up. And again, if you know that to be true, why not take advantage of it? But the fact is, it's not true, and that's what I was going to get to. So let's take their example of the Fed juicing. Yes, we've had a big V-shaped recovery from the bottom. NASDAQ even at a new all-time high. No mention from these guys of massive, massive, unprecedented fiscal support, okay? Now they talk about, this guy talks about M2, M2, M2. A lot of these guys who don't know what they're talking about, to them that means the money supply. The Fed has only a limited amount of control over M2. What the Fed can control to some degree are the level of reserve, uh, the, let's call it the monetary base, okay? That's reserves in the banking system and cash and coin, bank, vault, cash, and coin, all right? That's what the Fed can control, and even that, it's only a partial control because the Treasury's spending has an enormous influence on the monetary base. If the Fed just sat there on its hands and did nothing, the monetary base would continue to expand because the government spending, and we, we run a deficit, we're running currently a $2 trillion deficit, the deficits would cause reserve balances to pile up and pile up and pile up in the banking system. So even if the Fed did nothing, I mean, what would those guys say at that point? Hey, look at the Fed, the market's going up and the Fed's doing nothing. They still wouldn't understand that government spending alone would cause reserves to balloon in the banking system. And it takes the Treasury and the Fed combined to keep reserves from exploding through the roof. They actually have to keep kind of a lid on it. And that's done through the sale of Treasuries, which these people, of course, think that's borrowing. No, it's reserve drain. All right. Now you can take an example. 
in the period from um, October 2017 until September 2019, the monetary base, which is in fact the thing that the Fed has most control over, the monetary base, that declined by a trillion dollars. So there was no juicing up, they're juicing up. No, the Fed was literally taking the juice away. It was taking the juice away. And the stock market, the S&P went from 1,600 to 2,900. Where were those guys then? Where were they then? There was no juicing, but the market still went up. So it's funny, it's interesting, it's a way to make money, but you have to know, you have to understand, you have to have knowledge, and you have to have mental game, which is what I teach. Go to my website, sign up for a 30-day free trial of MMT Trader. Come on board. It's your duty to take money away from these guys. See you tomorrow. Bye.